All right. Will, we are ready when you're ready. Wesley's been very patient, so we'll get going right away. Thanks for the patience, Wesley. Mike Trudeau. Hey, Wesley, did uh, did Frank Vogel or one of the coaches approach you at half and say they were thinking about making that switch of having you come in, going small, um, AD to the five? And, uh, and if, if not, just what was your focus? What was your reaction coming in when you did in the third? Uh, coach came up to me right before halftime uh, and told me to you know, be ready to go in around like the six-minute mark in the third. Uh, so, you know, it's our job to be professional, be ready for whenever our name is called and show up and do everything you can to help the team win. You've been consistent about that, right? It's about having the team win. Wes, was it meaningful for you to be able to come in a game like this, all the pressure on the line, hit a three, uh, play D, uh, end up plus 17? Is that, uh, do you take that some individual satisfaction out of that or in addition to the team win? Well, I mean, the only individual satisfaction I get is the fact that my performance helped the team win. Um, you know, if we did, if I did all that and we didn't win, then it's, then it's all for nothing. I mean, that's, kind of the way I've always approached things. Um, and so, yeah, obviously you're always excited when you individually have a good game, but you know me, I'm still kicking myself in the three threes that I missed. So uh, um, that's just kind of my mentality, but you know, I, I'm proud that I was able to come in and help this team and, uh, and, um, and come out with a big win. Dave. Wes, what did it mean to the group to have uh, Keith and Jared Dudley speak up at halftime? Well, it was big. I mean, because you need everybody. And, you know, those are two guys that, that on, any, on any team, you know, can play. And, uh, you know, that's just the, the depth of our, of our roster, the depth of our team. And, you know, if you're not getting in the game or, or whatever, you still have a job to do um, at some point. And, you know, for Keith to step up and be a leader in the locker room, someone who's been through battles, um, someone who can help on the court as well, um, but, you know, sacrifices and stays professional, you know, does is always, you know, the kind of like that player coach liaison um, and just everybody just not making it about themselves. You know, those guys could easily sulk and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, they want to win just like everybody else. We all do. And so, you know, that's part of being professional. That's part of being ready. And that's part of helping the team. Well, Wes, um, Obviously, this team has has faced these unusual circumstances that landed you at number seven. But the fact is, no number seven seed has ever won the NBA title. I'm wondering, in the locker room, does that have meaning to you? Do, do, are you guys talking about sort of where you guys are starting from seating wise, and and how how you guys can no, make that not really? I mean, and that's a you know, I, I didn't know about that step, but there's also never been an NBA playing tournament of this and you know last year it was never been a bubble so you know it's this whole last two years last two seasons has been just learning and just adjusting and, and adapting and um you know we got we got hit with the injury bug early um and often it felt like this whole season so it's always been in, in flux and everybody's had to pull their weight and step up and, and adjust and all that kind of stuff so uh, at the end of the day we just needed to be playing our best basketball and wherever we fell is where we fell and uh in the standings, but you know, we got a job to do every single night. We don't view ourselves as a seven seed. So that's, that, that, that's that, I guess. Ben? Hey Wes, um, two, kind of two questions for you. What, what did you see when you were watching the game in the first half? Um, what were the things that stood out to you most that you thought maybe you could change? And then secondly, um, You've been around great players your whole career, either guarding them or playing with them. What, what did you think of LeBron down the stretch tonight? Um, I mean, my observation from the is was just playing with an urgency, you know, playing like this was game seven. And it's easy to say, it, but then when you get on the court, you know, those guys, they, they've been playing playoff basketball for the last week and a half. You know, those guys have had th this. This wasn't anything new to them, uh, whereas as us, it was kind of it was still very new. And so, you know, just urgency, just uh, aggressiveness on both ends of the court. And Brown, I mean, that's who he is. You know, he he steps up in big moments, big games, um, you know, and, you know, to hit that shot was was huge. But, I mean, all the plays that he made prior to that, you know, coming, putting the team on his back and, and getting downhill, uh, making the right passes, talking on defense, you know, that's that's who he is and that's why he's, he's one of the best to ever play this game. Bill? 
Wesley, I wanted to go back to what you were saying about, you know, obviously the importance of staying ready and, you know, being professional and being ready for when your number's called. That's not a position you've really been in in your career. Like, you've never really had to process this idea of staying ready, you know, career starter. What's your journey this year been like to sort of learn how to do that? And were, were, was, there, was there a learning curve there? Or how do you how do you figure that out in year 12, right? Year 12? Yeah, it's still a learning curve. Um, but, you know, rely on your faith. Rely on your work. Um, I got a I got a hell of an army, hell of a team with me, you know, family, friends, loved ones. Um, I continue to motivate, you know, but still staying humble, um, keeping keeping my faith and, le- and leaning on guys that, that have been in that situation. You know, me, me and Keith have, have gotten close, you know, throughout the season, all the times that we battled against each other, you know, because he's someone that can kind of relate to what it is that I have gone through and, and other guys have gone through, you know, not just myself, you know, it's an adjustment for everybody. But, um, you know, and just, and just learning, um, looking at how um, – he prepared, you know, it, it's, it's the thing about basketball is you can always get better at something. You know, you can always improve on something. It's like life. You can always get better if you're looking for it. And so, you know, a lot of it for me was just, was mentality. And, you know, like you said, as a career starter, it was easy to get, to be, to get into a rhythm, to get going. But, you know, now it's, um, it's, it's different. It's an adjustment, but it's something that, uh, you know, no one's going to pity. No one's going to feel sorry. It's do your job. And, uh, that's what I've been trying to do. Last two questions, Jovan. Hey, Wes. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to scout them, obviously, over the next few days and probably go through walkthroughs and practice. First, uh, initial thoughts on Phoenix. I mean, obviously, they're a tough team, having a great season. Uh, you know, if he's not coach of the year, coach of the year candidate. Uh, great players. So, you know, and they're playing, they're playing high-level basketball right now. And so... Um, we, we're going to have our work cut out for us, but uh, we'll have a plan in place. You know, I'm, I'm very confident in that. And, uh, you know, we've been building confidence over the last however many games. I think this is, what, six or seven, something straight. You know, we're getting that that winning habit, that winning mentality back. Uh, guys are getting their legs up underneath them. You know, we were able to integrate um, all of our lineups and rotations and stuff in a, in a real live playoff game just now and, and come out with a victory. So, uh, you know, we'll be ready, but it, by no means is it going to be easy. Last question, Melissa Rowland. Hey, Wes, uh, when LeBron went down, what was sort of going through your head? And did you guys realize that his vision had been impaired at the time? Uh, he said that he had got poked in the eye. Uh, I wouldn't worry about him. I mean, that's, it's, it's playoff time. You know, he, he's, he's going to show up. And he did, you know, he, he showed up huge, and, um, knocked the free throw down, hit a big three, you know, he, he was going, he, he wasn't going to go anywhere. So, you know, I, I wasn't too concerned about it. But I'm glad his eyes were okay. <laughs> Thanks, Wes. We're good there. All right.